Hello, hello. Welcome to the Church Media Guys show. Uh, I'm Dave. Nice to see you. If you guys are watching us live, I'm so glad you're here. We're going to be getting started with the official show here in just a few moments. If you're watching uh, through the recording, then you can probably skip to, you know, five or six minutes, seven minutes, something like that. When you see the other guy show up, that'll be Justin. Uh, Justin's my partner, and he will be joining us here in just a few moments. I'm getting a few last-minute things ready. Um, but basically what we're doing today is uh, a live recording of our show. So Justin and I do a show called the Church Media Guys Show. It's a YouTube show. It's also a uh, Facebook live stream, which you're watching right now. And it's also a podcast. So if you go to ctapodcast.com, you can subscribe to it there. It's the podcast for the Church Training Academy, which is a place where Justin and I teach uh, small and medium-sized churches, ministry-minded folks, etc., how to use and exploit media and technology so that we can take the gospel to the world. Justin and I both work at our churches uh, doing communications and media and all that sort of stuff, and so we're just taking all the stuff that we've been learning and stuff that I've been learning, especially uh, in uh, media production and infotainment and such over the last 10-plus years, and uh, just kind of channeling it all into the church. So this is the live recording of our podcast and our YouTube show, and our um, we do it through Facebook Live. So you guys are our studio audience. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, we're going to be getting started here, like I said, in just a moment. I just got to get a couple more things ready. I need to I need to send Justin the link to join. Uh, we use Zoom. If you guys uh, don't know what Zoom is, it's a absolutely awesome video conferencing, um, clients, uh, piece of software, app thing, etc. You know, my robot vacuum just turned on, and I know it's going to come in here making all kinds of noise. So if it does and you see me run away for a sec, it's because I'm turning that thing off. But I like having clean floors. Go figure. Hello to everybody on Facebook, and hello to everybody on the U of Tubes. Adam Schumann. Hello, Adam. What's up, my brother? Adam is also a church AV uh, specialist, expert, etc. The guy is like the king of installs. He's really, really brilliant when it comes to all that stuff. So everybody say hi to him. Oh, boy. I'm not going to lie. For the McDonald's of coffee, this is good. Pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, I'm one of those people, and if you don't like it, too bad. Mercy. Tommy Boy. Hey, Tommy. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Tommy. Tommy is one of my favorite people in the world. I'm not lying when I say that. Tommy is one of the original. In fact, Tommy is the very first the very first viewer, uh, participator, member, uh, community member, uh, person who engages, any other really cool adjective that I can think of for Church Training Academy ever, ever. Let's see. Uh, he, <laughs> That's Justin pinging me. He's like, give me the link. Copy the URL. And paste of a cake. There we go. And he'll be joining us here in just a second. In fact, if you watch this screen, can you see it? If you watch right here, his face is going to pop up. Oh, and here's, here's how this goes. As soon as I get ready to start my show, my wife texts me. <laughs> yep, there he is. <laughs> I'm see, here. See, he told you. I'm here. Goodness gracious. What a day. Yeah, what so, a day, Dave. <laughs> what's been going on, dude? You've uh, you've been having a character building week. I I uh, oh I see. My God. Baptism by fire. Yeah, what's been going on? Uh, let's see here. Where, where should I start? First of all, uh we have a tropical storm coming our way. Okay. Uh so um not nearly as bad as uh Harvey that we had and not nearly as bad as North Carolina has. Right. But people down here, and I don't understand. I was trying to explain this to my wife, and even she was like, I don't understand either. People down here, Dave, are salty because no one's talking about us. No one's sending us relief. No one's sending us blood or resources. Everyone's sending it to North Carolina because they're getting hit by the hurricane. Right. 
However, we're expecting floods down here too. And so everyone down here is real salty because no one's talking about us. Everyone, everyone's talking about North Carolina and South Carolina and Virginia. No one's talking about the Valley in Texas. And like, we have this huge coastal tropical storm. So you gotta live in the culture of that. Uh, we have a leak in our kitchen, so that's fantastic. And now the house stinks. stinks really? What kind, uh, what kind of leak sorry. in the kitchen? I, I think it's coming from the vent above the stove. And uh, uh, it started on Tuesday. Oh, and it's because of the like, rain, right? Because of the rain, because it's been raining we, all week. We, we had the more. exact same leak. The exact <laughs> same leak. Jaina, Sunday morning, I think, went in there and she said, she said, there's a there's a big stain on the on the ceiling. And I was like, what? And so I went in there and climbed up on the counter and I poked at it. And it was hard. It wasn't like, you know, soft and mushy and stuff. But uh, yeah, sure enough, the roofing guy came out and one of the one of the vents right above the uh, right up there um, had uh, water had seeped in there. So we're, we're going through it, too, except it doesn't stink. We, you know, take better care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I told my <laughs> landlord on Tuesday, I was like, hey, it's leaking. Because I just walked in, and, I, and I, well, it's funny. I was sitting in the living room, and I just heard dripping. Oh. And I was like, what is that? And I'm like looking outside. Maybe it was the first heavy rain of the, the storm. And I, and I keep hearing it. And eventually, I walk in the kitchen, and I'm like, oh, there's water on the stove. And I open up, and sure enough, there's no, like, leak. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere behind the cabinet, and yeah. it's coming out through the cabinet. And I told my landlord, and he texted me Wednesday. He's like, yeah, I can come on Friday to look at it. And I'm like, and, I t and last night... I smelled it, thought it might be the trash. I put a I dumped a bunch of uh, detergent down the sink, see maybe it was the pipe, but nah, it's it's bad. It smells so bad in this house. It's where, so bad. where does your landlord live? I have no idea. I mean, does your is your landlord like I don't know, like a hundred miles away or something? We call our landlord and they they say, um, you know, we, we told her like at night and she said, I'll begin working on this in the morning and then you know, the next day she said, uh, a guy from Wade Roofing will be stopping by tomorrow. We're like, okay. And so Wednesday, the guy came out and climbed up on the roof and started looking around and stuff. Come to find out we have tons of hail damage and stuff. It looks like we're going to get a whole new roof and all wow. the, uh, all the, all the treatment. Yeah, and all that um, stuff. It, that's now it normally is, but for some reason he's like, I'll come back Friday. Uh, I guess maybe he didn't know it was going to rain this much. Uh, maybe he didn't think it looked that bad. Cause you know, the best pictures I could get were just a couple drops, but, mm. um, yeah. Uh, it's a crazy week. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I woke up, uh, first world problem here. I woke up at two in the morning this morning to pre order the new iPhone. Oh, you poor thing. I know. It's just terrible. I had. Hey, I now had wait. Do most. you have to turn in your 10 or are you going to send it to me? Uh, I will sell it to you <laughs> and then sell, send it to you. Sell uh, it to me. I don't think I have to turn it in, but I will turn it in. Mm. Uh, yeah, just, just crazy stuff. And. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I know I sent you a list of just like everything that's going on wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and then just flood preparations. So we got that to look forward to. Also, our pool is ruined again because of the storm. So, oh, yeah, we have. <laughs> it's just... And that's a oh man. The... Uh, Dan said, I'm so glad you two switch sides so much better. Dan Ermler. Awesome. So really? Likes left side. Really? Yeah. I think it works because you know you go let you read left to right. You want you want the you want the good guy to be on the left. The villain's always on the right. <laughs> wait a sec. When, wait a sec. I'm, I'm I'm very right wing. What are you talking about? You're sticking me on the left now. <laughs> well, when I, I will say when Captain America punched Hitler on the cover of his comic book, Captain America was on the right and Hitler was on the left. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Exit stage left, even uh, man, it stinks in here. I gotta turn on all the senses. <laughs> <laughs> all the senses. I didn't. I, I last night I got it because I also disinfected all the counters and the stove, thinking maybe something dripped on sure. there. And, it, and you check, uh, you checked the because uh, we've come home before from like a trip and forgot, you know, realized that we had forgotten to like run the garbage disposal in the sink, you know, well, until we, we come in and it's like... We don't have a garbage disposal. That's why I just kind of ah. flushed a bunch of detergent down there. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, I, and I did some vinegar and baking soda uh, as well. Made a little volcano. Nice. Uh, but yeah, nothing... Uh, I, it's got to be that. Because I can't... Because last night too, it was just the faintest smell. And I couldn't really find like, you know, like when you're like looking through the fridge and like, what stinks? And then you finally open up the Tupperware and like, it's this. I never had that moment. Like, it's just... It's just around yeah. and then i come in just right now to the house and it's like oh i'm dog. gonna die 
poor dogs that have to sit here in this and poor mommy is going to have to come home and uh, deal with the landlord and all that stuff. So yeah, she's going to be like, I leave crazy, you, I leave crazy you crazy. alone for five days. Yeah. And then <laughs> uh, poor Jill had a rough week. It's, it's heart, it's heartwarming because she, she had, she threw a fit in school for the first time ever. Really? And uh, for the first time got grounded because she's playing a lot of Mario now. And you saw, if yeah. you saw in the uh, church media hacks group yeah, and in my nerd pastors group, she's playing Mario now and she's loving it. And Wednesday was the first time I had to tell her no Mario today. You were very bad in school. You weren't uh, listening. Uh, and, uh, and her teeth, she wouldn't talk to me about it. And, and I understand I was like this too. When I had a bad day, when I would get bullied in school, I didn't want to talk to my parents about it sure. that night. So I said, we'll give her some time. And the teacher said, nothing happened. Uh, Thursday, my wife texts her teacher and the teacher texts back. Yeah, she's having a hard time because her mommy's out of town and she misses her mommy. Sure. And she wants it. She just wants it to be Friday. So yeah. she can see her mommy. No, I, I understand she, that completely. Bridget's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And, yeah. And she's here on the weekends. I can't even imagine. Like we had friends that went to college out of state. And of course, army, army parents. That have to have to go deploy for six months like golly i cannot imagine i know so she's she's been acting out so that's added to this uh yeah well i mean week, so. it's under it's understandable I, i've been looking forward to this show because the live show is my it's the light at the end of the tunnel fantastic i need to yeah. share this uh brian uh brian asked what iphones uh, i got my wife my wife is the spoiled one. Uh, she's getting the 256 Gold XS Max. Uh, I am getting... Also the, known as a Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a supercharged Kindle with the iOS. Uh, and I am getting the basic X Silver 64. I don't need a lot of storage on my phone. Uh, every month as part of... I have a routine at the beginning of every month. I pay rent. I give the dogs their hardware medicine. I go to Costco. And I download all my photos onto my computer and back up my phone. So at any one point, I really don't use more than 30 gigs on my phone. You don't, so you don't have that fine. automatically just happening. I don't, I don't, I don't trust it. Cause huh. I, I don't want it to back up photos that I don't care about. Cause there's a lot of photos I take on Sunday. Yeah. I just go to Instagram and then I don't need them on my phone anymore. Oh. So I just, I just like, whatever, bye bye. Uh, and then, you know, I do take a lot of photos on my phone that, I'll take 16 photos and I only need one, you know, kind right. of the whole take a million photos just so you can have a few usable ones. That's especially true for me. So at the end of the month, I go through, I delete all the ones I didn't use, delete all the ones I didn't need, like screenshots or like, hey, look at this stupid picture, you know, uh, and the ones that I actually want to keep, I upload to my computer and then I delete them off my phone. So that's cool. Yeah. Hey, did you share? Uh, no, I don't. I do the I do the iCloud backup, but uh, I kind of. I, I do want to have it in two places. So, you know, I do it by hand so I can kind of control where everything is sorted and organized. Uh, and then also, you know, you never know what's going to happen on iCloud. I don't want to get, yeah, I don't want to have, so, you know, take a picture that, you know, I take a funny picture of, of Jill in her panties and I send it to my wife, but now, right. you know, someone else has access to it. No, you know, I understand like, like the thing. So, yeah, I I'm not kind of weird like that. My wife, on the other hand, there's a reason why she needs the 256 gig iphone yeah <laughs> because that is her backup i'm not salty about it <laughs> <laughs> that's all awesome. so, yeah so i always get the base model because uh I, that's all i need all right guys everything seems to be running smoothly over here on this end so we are going to get started uh oh you know what i need to load up the uh the interview clip yeah dave why don't you load up the interview clip I'm extra salty today. I'm Apparently. Tired. <laughs> I'm tired. It stinks in here. <laughs> it's going to flood. Our pool has been ruined. I got I, And I spent like four weeks getting that pool ready, and now it's already all green and stuff. You Ugh, poor just thing. Just crazy. <laughs> D. Garrett Roper says, I wished I knew what y'all were talking about. Oh, Roper. Roper lived across the hall from me in uh, in college. Oh, he, I'm sorry. He is a drummer of excellence. Chris Evan, Brian Gowing, between. There we are. So that's working. Yeah. So Roper is, uh, what, what is it? The Howard Payne bees, honeybees? Yellow jackets. C cutie bees, something like that. He's a yellow jacket. <laughs> He's also a drummer and part of a duo. And uh, these guys work 
three or four nights a week. They're really good, too. All right. Oh, I wanted to get some paper. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to write some stuff down for the protein. Oh, okay. Um, holy cow. It's funny. You got the little alfalfa thing going on in the back of your head. I do? You, you have one, one, little, one little spot. That's awesome. Okay. I don't have a preview. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it right there? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that happens when I don't uh, when I don't get enough sleep. I don't spend enough time on my hair. Hello, Mr. Wilson. There we go. Okay, uh, uh, right there. Yeah, look at that. Where is it? So what I do is I gotta kind of like tuck it under other hair. <laughs> it's not working. You have to weave. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's awesome. All right. Okay. So yeah. uh, what are we doing well, on our? I don't look down. Yeah. There you go. Just. The whole time it could be up. that's that's the brand guys that's the hair i need a hair light so you can see it a little bit better <laughs> all right so what uh, what is our pro tip today what are we gonna do yeah give me uh give me a second here okay. um we're gonna do a super low tech actually happened in our church on sunday and i was like i was t- i was i was uh emailing our, our music pastor and i was like hey we did this at my last church and it made when when this happens so much easier so mm. i was like ah that's a story All right, so while he's doing that, anybody has any questions? Now is the time to do it. Uh, Jeffrey Powers says to shave it off. Jeffrey's also (laughs) bald-headed. If I could grow a beard, I I would consider shaving my head. I like that look, but I can't grow a beard. Yeah, basically the upside-down face. Yep, I love that. Yeah, my cousin um, is a retired Army, and uh, he got out of his truck one time and I hadn't seen him in probably six months since Christmas, he got out of his truck and, um, he had on the, uh, the, the Oakley glasses with the little neoprene, um, uh, holder for around his neck. He was ball headed and he had a beard and he's got tattoos. And I was like, this guy looks like a mercenary. And it's a great, All right. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, this will be good. All right. Super low tech pro tip, but I, I think it'll help a lot of people that haven't thought about this. And Dave, it'll probably you'll probably fall asleep, but that's fine. Okay, that works for me. Rest. Get some rest. All right. Oh, are we doing a, are we doing an intro or anything? Yeah. Have you already done that part? No, 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 no. I mean, I welcomed okay. everybody and did all the stuff that you wrote down in the big list for me to say before you ever got here. <laughs> Okay, good. All right, here yeah, we go. Uh, that's another thing. They closed half our parking lots at school, so at a park across campus. Ah, so so it's so it's literally. I went, my norm, I went to my normal parking lot, so it, and I had to walk even further to get back to where I actually it, was. It takes you twice as long now to go from your desk to your car than it does to go from your car to the house. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Interesting. All of a sudden, I'm like lagging. That is the weirdest thing. You're great, but I'm lagging. What the heck is going on? Kidding me? Uh, Yeah, you got low frame rate. I can see it on here. Brian asked, what's the official start time? Official start time is 1115. Uh, For those of you that don't know or tuning in maybe for the first time, this is a live recording. So we are uh, basically letting you watch live us recording um so we're not trying to put on a show a live show like you might see on twitch.tv or other church groups we're gonna start and stop we're gonna talk we're gonna Mm -hmm. laugh we're gonna make jokes we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna maybe talk about some tangents things this is really letting you guys in on our recording process and then you can also influence Um, one thing that i don't like is when people go live and they just kind of do their show and it's kind of like they don't interact with the audience. They don't uh, really acknowledge that you're there. And uh, I'm not a fan of that. And I don't think Dave is either. No. Uh, and so uh, the official start time is 1115, but we really don't get into any of the content until 1130. So um, yeah, if you're kind of wondering like, man, these guys are a bunch of goofballs. Like when are they going to actually get to the info? Uh, well, we're getting to it now. Uh, but yeah, there is a little bit of setup and testing and troubleshooting that goes on right before we go live. 
Uh, some people don't like it, and I absolutely encourage you, hey, the live show's not for you. That's fine. Uh, you can watch the published stuff. Mm -hmm. Other people, they like the behind the scenes. They like the start stop. They like to see how we troubleshoot. They like to see the people behind uh, the show a little bit more. Uh, and and uh, so this is more for them. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, he said, I noticed. I wanted to tell a friend. Yeah. The live show, for a lot of people, it's the top of the funnel. For us, it's kind of the middle. Um, yeah, you know, we, we kind of get discovered from our podcast and our YouTube channel and we invite you to watch the live show and participate mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're not going to leave you hanging either, Brian, because I'm talking to you, Brian. That's right. Uh, Brian. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say someone in the chat as was the, no, Brian. No, it's Brian right there on this, right there Brian underneath Tommy start time. I'm telling you right now, Brian. That's right. <laughs> right. And Wendy, I know you're watching Wendy. You haven't said anything on the chat, but I know you're there. That's right. We're watching if you. There really is someone named Wendy in the chat. She's gonna be super freaked out. Yeah, that's gonna right, be awesome. She's gonna come running back in the room. <laughs> what? <laughs> so if you want to tell your friend Brian, we're starting right now. Yeah. And by the way, if you guys go to uh, easylivestreaming.com, uh, you we can get our guide, uh, live streaming for churches the easy way. Um, that will will email that to you, but that'll also put you on our email list. And every day, every day, every time we're gonna go live or anytime the show starts, we send out an email letting you know that we're starting so that you can jump in and say hi and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> and I'm still coughing. How about that? All right, here we go. <clears throat> Church sound is such a big field. There's so many things to consider. There's mixers. Should I go analog? Should I go digital? Should we still make CDs? Should we make DVDs? All, I mean, just there's a ton of stuff. And so today, we're going to break some of that down. All right. Boy, I don't know why I'm lagging on this. This is driving me insane. Can you check and see if it's picking up on your recording? I can. Let me stop the recording. And go look real quick. Uh, while while Dave is checking that, let me know. Are you pre-ordering the iPhone? You got that to look forward to. Uh, one of my friends is going to the best. It, he's going uh, to the Best Buy. Uh, he's going to Best Church Buy. Church Sound is such a big uh, field. There's so his. many right now. What the uh, and, uh, like yeah, right now after lunch. So I don't know if he's get, mine's going to come on the 21st. I should get mine on Friday. So I'm I'm really pleased with that at least. Uh, did not did not take. I did not have the world's best customer service representative last night. It was uh, kind of a nightmare. I might save that for the insiders because boy, that was a nightmare. Uh, think Laurel and Hardy in color, Brian. I don't get that reference. Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. I was thinking more Three Stooges, but that's good. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see if this is any better. Man. Driving me crazy. Laurel and Hart, is that a TV show? From, oh my gosh. That I'm way too young to have heard of. They're a comedy group. Like Abbott and Costello? Yes, actually before them. Okay. They were, they did silent films actually beforehand. All right. Maybe we should do a silent episode. Yeah, just. Probably, probably get along better. <laughs> like we have a problem. All right, folks. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Church Media Guys show. My name is Dave Curley, and if we've not met, my name is Dave Curley. You're screwing me up. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I was looking at my... Is there a way to unmirror my video? No. Okay, you'll have to unmirror it in post. Hang on. Un here, hold, my... hold on. Hold it up. <laughs> hold it up. Can you read that? Yes. Oh, Okay. Then yeah. never mind. It's just right. mirrored on my preview. All right. Sorry. Seriously. <laughs> I knew that was going to throw you off. <laughs> hey, gun boy. Okay, hang on just a second. I see what the deal is. I brought I'm, tactiles. Hey, everybody, I'm going to stop the stream for just a second so I can a adjust a setting. Um, it will pick up very quickly. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, good old Herb Alpert. All right. All right, we're back, guys. All right. Uh, wave your hand. 
I got you on YouTube. Your hand in the air, waving like you just don't care. Yeah, it looks a lot smoother on YouTube. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. The coolest of beans. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The slide says Thursday at eleven CST. Dave. Yeah, I got it. There's a whole lot of branding stuff I got to re. I got to redo. I got to change. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I got to do because we've made a lot of updates and, and changes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's still doing it, but not as bad. All right, it is what it is, folks. Sorry about this. Hey, guys, welcome to another episode of the Church of Media Guys show. And if we haven't met, my name is Dave Curley, and I'm the founder of ChurchTrainingAcademy.com, which is a place where you and I and other media-minded folks all come together to learn how to use and exploit media and technology so we can take the gospel to the world. That's what we do on this show. We are talking about how to use and exploit me the media, right, the, 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 the tools, all that sort of stuff, um, podcasting, live streaming, um, what else, email even, graphics, audio, video, all that sort of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that we talk about here on the Church Media Guys show. With me, as always, is my lovely and talented cohort, Dr. Justin Nava. What's going on, Dave? What's going on, everyone listening in the podcast, the YouTube, your Apple TV, your Roku, Facebook, watching with us in the watch group. Appreciate you watching. And for those watching us live, like Brian on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were interacting with Brian. He was asking some hardball questions, but I think we got through. Yeah. He earned his respects. Yeah, crack for that watching nut. Brian and Dan watching on Facebook, putting up with us. Dave, yes. what a day it has been. Yes. I came out of it with an iPhone pre-order. Yay, that's good. That's that's I'm really good. I'm, I'm glad. By the time you're watching this, I will already have had it and become bored with it. Yeah, but, you'll uh, have already yeah. you've already it had it um, and then complained about it because you know they don't ever release something perfect. They used to <laughs> exactly. remember. They used to remember. I remember those days. That you know, the... I, I respect Apple as a business for what they're doing and what they've done. Uh, but yeah, you know, I hate to sound like one of the old guys, but it just hasn't been the same since the passing of Steve Jobs. No, it so. hasn't. It has uh, under under Mr. Jobs, I don't believe. Man, that sounded weird. Under Mr. Jobs, uh, I don't. I don't believe there would be all this X X S X R Max or no. X S Max and X. I mean, that's just or 10 S. No, that's just a that's just a terrible. And the keynote and, was all techie stuff, which I'm sure you loved. But man, Steve Jobs just didn't do that. Kind yeah, of stuff. it's it's you know, it, it was like, hey, here's a phone. It works. It looks great, and it's better than everything else out there yes and with it you can do this and you can do that and you can do yeah. this what they had was yeah. a uh, base basically uh worldwide developers conference type talk for the hardware yes yeah yes a absolutely that's a really and, good and the 10 wouldn't yeah. have come out last year it would have come out this year you think fixed they, they wouldn't have skipped nine no no they they, they would have done well i don't care what they call it that that really doesn't mean anything to me but that machine would not have been released with the issues that it had. It would have been all been fixed uh, and delivered in this form that we have now with, you know, all the fixes and stuff. Now, now but then again, about, but now, then, last question about the iPhone. Do you think under jobs we would have the notch? No, I don't think you would have uh, allowed that. I don't think so either. No, I, I, I think that's a um, uh, that is an that is an aesthetic flaw. Um, that they try to, you know, spin as some sort of a benefit or something. And you want you want to know how how stupid the notch is? I'm going to tell you. I, here's here's where I'm going to vent for two seconds because I never vent. Oh boy, here we go. Here's here's how stupid the notch is. The notch is so stupid. How stupid is it? It's so stupid that the other manufacturers out there incorporated the notch in their designs like some of the Android people, were incorporating the notch in their design. That, uh, that whole situation is stupid. Six ways from Sunday. That, that, uh, is, that is unbelievable. I totally agree with you. And yeah. in fact, you probably knew this, Dave, Android uh, actually put in its terms of use, you cannot have more than three notches on your phone. Yeah, that is <laughs> stupid. All of it is stupid. I, and you, you know what? I mean, that just speaks to the power of... Yeah. Uh, Apple and culture. You know, Apple. it's it. It reminds me. It that reminds so me of insane. back in back in in high school when you know the cool guy um, accidentally snagged his pants on his locker and yes. his back pocket got tore. And by the end of the week, everybody was walking around with a tore pocket. Yep. You're idiots. 
So, so does that make Apple one of the mean girls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, Apple is kind of a mean girl. Wait, my, um, okay, wait. It hasn't. My my machine hasn't locked up. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> no, right. I I am uh, I yeah. I com I complain because I'm a fan and I, and I want them to be the best out there, regardless yeah, of what I their think, one trillion absolutely. dollar valuation says. Yeah, I would say I, I'm not. I'm definitely not a fanboy, uh, because I will tell you this right here on the air. I would love. I would much rather prefer uh, to walk around and buy the the Note Nine. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful phone. That thing's I looking love smooth. That phone, I that thing looks smooth. Looks amazing. But I, I'd rather I want iOS. I need iOS. I would say, and so I'm stuck with with iPhones. And and they are great devices. But man, I wish I could put an iOS on a on a Note Nine, and I would buy that device. Yeah, it is what it is. Yep. Awesome. All, all right. right. <laughs> so um, now that we've vented. I'm probably cutting all this out even as we speak. <laughs> we'll make it some bonus content. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, let's talk about our uh, pro tip. Okay, ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba pro tip. All right, you're hot. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> What's going on, guys? Oh, by the way, should we be introducing ourselves like this is justin from church training academy today i'm going to show you yeah go for it okay all right i mean i think it could work either way i just wanted to make sure right and you said you worked this one out as a story right yes good tim shmori will be happy <laughs> i hope so <laughs> what's going on guys justin nava here from church training academy and today i'm going to give you a very low-tech solution but a very important one for when your mic goes out on stage. Now, this one is not for the pastor on stage. This is actually for the people in the booth. And let me tell you a story of what made me want to share this, because for me, it was common knowledge. Uh, but our church was not, my new church that I've been at for two years was not prepared for this. And so I want to share it with you because I want it to be common knowledge with you. So I'm sitting in church. Uh, we had a fantastic worship set, a fantastic start to the service. Pastor comes up. And he starts talking and there's no sound coming through, coming through his mic. He's got the, he's got the headset mic on no sound. And we're in a smaller church, so you can still hear him. But the whole time I'm thinking, I have no sermon recording. I am in trouble. I will not have anything recorded for the sermon. We need to get this mic working. And I did the thing that I think we all hate where, where you're sitting in service and you're sitting in the booth and you see someone do this. You know what I'm saying? They, they look back at you and you just feel like, oh. and what's worse is the, the pastor's mic isn't working. The pastor's connection is loose. The batteries are out of the handheld or something like that. And it's not your fault. It really isn't your fault in the booth. It's something on stage. And what we had to do on Sunday was the music pastor who was out uh, in the back of the booth had to walk up in the aisle in the middle of the pastor trying to make his illustration to start the sermon. And he kind of grabs the handheld mic and gives it to the pastor. Everyone's distracted. The pastor's like, no, let me check my mic. And the batteries have fallen out. And he's like, okay, I got it on, puts it back in his pocket. You can actually go onto my church's Facebook page. And we, I filmed this all because I was like, hey, there's no perfect people here, even the preacher. And it was just this awkward situation. And unfortunately, I did miss the first five minutes of the sermon because we just didn't get it recorded. Now, what I did uh, after that was I realized that, you know, we have no uh, emergency plan. If the pastor's mic is not turned on, if the batteries are dead, or if he needs to use a different mic or something else that we'll get to, um, we have no way to communicate that. All we have is to walk up and like tell the pastor, do some awkward signals or grab a different mic and hand it to him. And that's always awkward because then the pastor's like getting a mic and he's like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to use this now. Ha ha ha. It's really distracting and it's just, it's awful. It's an awful situation. <clears throat> My low tech pro tip for you today is really simple. Get a big poster pad. Now this is like a notepad that you have multiple pages on and you can flip through them but they're poster sized. You can find them at Staples, Office Max, Amazon. They're like 20 bucks. Um, you could buy poster boards if you want. I like the pads because they're a little bit easier to store. And then all you need to do is write in big letters with a thick marker, instructions for your pastor. And I actually made some examples here. I'm just using cardboard paper. But on Sunday, here's what we would have done. 
pastor's mic isn't working, we just hold up a little sign here that says, turn mic pack on. No awkward walking up and handing the pastor a mic. No waving your arms in the back. And of course, no not getting the sermon recorded. All you have to do is hold up the, the sign here. And this is a big poster board. So the pastor knows, oh, turn mic pack on. In case the mic pack's not working, maybe there's a lot of, there's a loose connection. Sometimes pastor goes up with a, a headset mic and you hear, <laughs> Dave does the sound better than I can. Uh, and, and there's some connection loose. Then you, you, you flip the page over and you, you hold up this, use handheld. Then the pastor knows I'm gonna go grab a handheld mic from the musicians, turn it on and start talking. No stopping the sermon. No awkward pause, no checking the mic and trying to replug it in. Just save everyone some time and some and quite honestly some embarrassment and and hold up a sign like this. I would even I would even say what color? Use purple handheld, use yellow handheld if you use the color tape. And my favorite, I'm gonna show you one more today. This one is super important because there's no good way to communicate it. Dave, you know what this means? Uh close it. Examine your zipper. Oh, <laughs> nice. When the pastor's got to fly down, you got to let him know. <laughs> and there's, and let me tell you, uh, you might walk up there and you might hand him a mic. You might turn on his mic pack for him, but you are not walking up there and zipping up his pants. So this is a sign that's a must have. And let me tell you guys, I have done, we had a, we had a drama group in my youth group when I was a youth intern. And I have done a full skit with my zipper down. Not pretty, Dave. And so I always want to make sure that this is on my list of poster pads. So again, super cheap. It's 20 bucks at your local office supply store or on Amazon. Make up some cards that, you know, you like use these three as a start. Maybe you have a couple unique ones. Like uh, for us, a lot of our preachers have beards. So I would make another one that says, get Mike out of beard. Because sometimes the mic gets in there and then you get a lot of feedback or something. So you know, pull mic out of beard or something like that. Find something uh, uh, that, you know, has a common occurrence and make a big poster pad or a poster board and then just hold it up um, whenever that happens. No awkwardly walking, no awkwardly figuring it out, no troubleshooting on the spot. You just flip the page and then you do this. I've been watching the poster pad method uh, since I was a child. And I remember looking back and seeing Tommy, our sound guy, hold up big poster pads that said exactly that, turn mic on. Uh, and it worked flawless and it kind of, we kind of did it at all my churches, but now that I'm at one where I'm not in the booth, uh, this happened and it was a very awkward Sunday and I missed the first five minutes of the sermon because we didn't know what was going on or how to communicate it. We bought a poster pad. We're going to make a few pages here and we're ready the next time it happens. So low tech solution, when your pastor's mic's not working, when you need to communicate, use the poster pad and then always, always keep some blank pages and your big thick Sharpie marker. So if something happens and you need to communicate, you don't have one pre-made, you can make it right there on the spot. And then of course you can just save it if it ever happens again. What do you think about that, Dave? I was Dave, giving, you still here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was giving, uh, I was, I was giving some, uh, some breath there so I can cut it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I think this, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's great. Um, it, a lot of times we always try to go to a high tech solution for something that we don't need a high tech solution for. I would. Um, <laughs> it reminds me. Um, I had a my uh, religious education professor back at Howard Payne is one of these guys that uh, I, I, invariably. I, I mean, and I'm not kidding. That I'm not exaggerating. Two to three sentences into any given lecture, boom. There's all that white right there in the corner of his of his lips right there. The whole time, Ooh. I mean, Ooh. he gets he gets three sentences out him. It's right there. <laughs> so I would make a I would make a big old sign that says, "Get that spit out of the corner of your mouth, or drink some <laughs> water, dummy," you know, something like that. Because that's that's all all you could stare at the whole time. It's kind of like an Uncle Buck when he sits down at the at the principal's office, and all he sees is that gigantic, huge mole or whatever she had on her chin hi good morning buck melanoma i'm molly russell's wart <laughs> you know i mean that's all <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not her wart i'm her melanoma <laughs> that, that's dave all... <laughs> with uh dave with the awkward awkward phrasing here that's right right on time 
So anyway, yes, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a it's a it's a brilliant idea. And and that be sure everybody that's watching and listening to this, be sure that that you don't overthink for a solution sometimes because we do tend, you know, I mean, here here we are with with hammers, you know, and we're we're focusing on how to use hammers and how to, you know, use the right hammer for the right thing and all this and not everything's a nail, you know? Sometimes you just need a piece of scotch tape. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian in the chat said, cue cards work for Letterman. They can work for us. Exactly. They're kind of like cue cards for when things go wrong. Fantastic. Okay. Let's get to our, um, what's my doodle? Yeah. Tommy said, don't forget the redneck solution. Yell at the top of your voice. Turn your mic on. That's exactly what happened this Sunday. And yeah. it, it, like I said, everything just kind of came to a stop. He had a fantastic illustration and we talked with Ben Stapley about, uh, you know, you have to make your props as big as possible. Right. He did that. He brought uh, like eight pieces of luggage and he was like dragging it and hitting all the pews and like, excuse me, pardon me, come try and walking through. And it was really great, <laughs> but no one heard it. <laughs> and then when he got up there and started talking about the pack baggage and packing, we didn't get any of that for the sermon recording. The recording just started and he was talking about camping. Uh, so unfortunately we lost all that because we spent so much time turn your mic on is that better yes okay the batteries are slipping out let me put it back in you know yeah. and then you're like we, start we over <laughs> we made light of the situation but he was five minutes in he wasn't gonna start over yeah yeah so you know again this would have been real quick turn mic back on yep agreed all right we're gonna do our whatchamacallit uh, feature presentation. Here we are. On today's show, we're talking with the guys over at uh, the website behind the mixer. Um, you know, Justin, you you guys you guys are using a digital mixer at your church. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and we are too. We um, we bought one. It's it's probably been eight years ago or something. We went to a digital mixer, and I love it. it it's it's a fantastic um, unit and stuff. But I've noticed in our um, church media hacks group that um, you know every every week or so we get one or two people that ask, um, you know, that that say in in when they ask to join, we ask them what's what's the biggest issue that you have or the biggest challenge you're facing. And sometimes, you know, we get something that is sound related, whether it's uh, we need to upgrade our sound or we're not sure what mixer to get or we're not sure how to upgrade our sound or, you know, anything um, surrounding that. We're starting to see questions like that a lot. Yes. <laughs> this is where you uh, pick up the conversation and kind of roll forward uh, with it a little fine. bit. I, I don't have a video of you, so I can't tell, like, if you're, like, looking at me or looking at the chat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I have nothing to bounce off of you on. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me start there. Um, yeah. So every, every once in a while we get a question, um, you know, what do we do when we get a new board? We've gotten a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to tune the room? Is, is one board better than another? Uh, we even get questions like, uh, is analog supreme with sound boards? Like it might be with, you know, vinyl versus right. Right. You know, CDs. Um, you know, so we got a lot of questions of those. So I reached out to some of the experts in the field and it was very interesting. We kind of came into this conversation wanting to know how do you, what do you do with a new board? What are kind of some of the troubleshooting steps? Mm -hmm. And they kind of stuck with us and we got to know some information and answer some qu common questions about, you know, w when we buy a new board, if we only have had analog, which a lot of churches do, we just got our first digital board a couple years ago. Um, you know, should we go with analog again because that's what we know because it's cheaper or should we go with digital and man there's so much to do on a digital board what do we focus on first mm -hmm. they were really really gracious and they answered all of our questions and it was a long interview uh and uh very thankful for them taking their time because man we got a lot out of it this is one of our, one of our most valuable if you really have an issue with uh how to tune your board how to tune your room what do you need to focus on first when you have a, a digital board that can do a million things? This is going to be one of the most valuable tactical things that you can take out of these uh, because it's so much good stuff. Chris and Brian are amazing guys and very gracious to, to spend so much time with us. Chris Huff and Brian Gowing, between the two of them, they have 50 years of pro audio experience. These two guys are the geniuses behind the mixer. Guys, Chris, Brian, 
thank y'all so much for joining the Church Media Guy show today. How are y'all? Yeah, pretty good. Glad to be here. Doing well, doing great. Great to be on the show. Fantastic. We are glad you guys are here. We're glad we finally got some like pro audio guys in here to either back up some of the stuff that Justin and I have been saying for the last year or to completely debunk us and relegate us to the ash bin of internet history. <laughs> hey, I'd rather learn that I'm wrong than keep doing it ignorantly. So I'm glad we got Chris and Brian here because while audio, you know, we, we talk about being a T-shaped individual. You have your, your depth of learning and then you have a couple things on top that you spread out your knowledge Dude, on. I'm more like a pear. <laughs> and audio is one of those things that I know a lot of, but I, 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 I'm I know enough to be dangerous. So I'm really glad to have Chris and Brian on here, especially with what we're going to talk about today, because um, that's where I become less dangerous. Um, so Chris and Brian, um, the main reason we, we asked you to come on here is because we've gotten a couple of questions from our audience and knowing where you've come from to where you are now. Um, we don't have to dive into the to the super technical because obviously every situation is going to be different. But we keep hearing we, we we either got a new soundboard or we're looking to get a new soundboard. We need something that's easy for our volunteers. Um, we want something that maybe could last a long time. And we had someone even ask, um, should we go with an analog board so we can learn the fine tuning and learn what all the knobs do and, and actually physically see things like sub channeling and fading and all that stuff? Or should we go ahead and get the digital board um, because maybe we set it up one time and then people can just press a button. They don't really know what they're doing, but they're pressing a button. And all of your experience since you've worked with analog and now digital, um, kind of walk us through, let's say we're going to get a new board. You can't tune something you don't have right now. Um, what, are the, what are the things you look at when you're getting a new board and you have a volunteer team of, let's say, three people? Well, if, I'm, if I've got three people and I want to get a new console, the first thing I want to do is say, okay, what is the tech level of my team and how willing are, how willing are they to go ahead and step up and learn a new console? And that's going to help me in some way say, if I go digital, how far digital can I go? Um, because there's a lot that you can do with the digital console and some consoles are honestly more complicated than others. While at the same time, there are a number of digital consoles that to me, anybody can learn as long as they're willing to put in just a little bit of time. Uh, I don't know about too much, but to say, uh, I will say that digital consoles, you can do virtual sound check. And that means you can, you can record everything on all the individual channels and then play it back when everybody's gone. And that's an excellent way to learn a console. Uh, but should you go analog or digital? Um, to me, a lot of that is dependent on what are our needs. And I mean, if you're just talking a church with that needs a handful of channels to do, let's say a piano, a couple microphones, you know, maybe a playback device, you know, you could easily go analog. But, you know, if, if even with that, you could say, well, we want to go digital because we want to take advantage of all the different options that digital gives us because we could do analog plus a bunch of rack components or for the same price, go with a digital console. And so some of making these decisions is looking at what your needs are, your current needs, what your future needs are going to be, and then also you know, the level of expertise of the tech team. And I've, I've known churches where, you know, they're tech people. All they want to be able to do is adjust volumes. They don't even have the desire to learn how to mix. And with that, I'm saying, look, if you need a new board because your old boards, you know, channels are dying or whatever, just get another analog console. Yeah. Uh, but if you're really going to step up into the digital world, I think anybody who, who's interested in mixing, go ahead and go from analog to digital because there's really no reason to stay analog. And a lot of that's just with, with the price and the features that you get. So one of the, one of the things that you, you mentioned was you know, getting a digital board so that you don't have to have you know, a rack full of components. Just to clarify for some people that are completely new to this, um, back in the day, um, we, you know, we would have, we would have a board that, uh, there's an analog board, a Mackie, you know, 16 channel or 24 channel or something like that. And then 
we would, if we needed compression, if we needed uh, a gate or some limiting or something like that, we would need to have, in, in some cases, you know, early on, we, we may need to have one, one compressor per channel, you know, or, um, a, you know, two or three of the mic channels going into the compressor, uh, but then like maybe not the guitar or something like that. So we would have to start buying all these other components that were then going in and out of the board, in and out. So what you're saying is that with some of these digital boards, um, compression, uh, uh, gate, um, other types of uh, effects processing and stuff can actually be done per channel on the digital board just by going to another screen and twisting some digital knobs and stuff? Right, exactly. And let's say I've got an analog board and I want to add reverb. Well, if I get a rack unit that can do reverb for two channels, I've got a couple options. I either only use that on two channels or I could route, let's say, all vocals mm -hmm. to a submix mm -hmm. and then apply reverb just to that. But if I wanted to do reverb on multiple different instruments, let's say six, then I'd have to have three rack um, effects units. And so there you're just adding, you know, that's more money, more money, more money. And more power you, requirements. Right. Mm -hmm. And with digital, because everything's, it's, it's basically a huge computer and you just say, okay, I'm going to go to this channel and I want to add my reverb and then you can do that. So, so like the stuff that we're doing, you know, in any of us that, that do any kind of audio work on our computers at home, uh, whether we're just, you know, whether you're recording a podcast or tweaking the audio for your sermon or something like that using Adobe Audition or whatever, you've got all these plugins that you can buy, which is basically the software that drives the hardware components, you know, like a, uh, like a compressor. Um, and, and it's basically, it's, it's basically the code that runs these boxes that you can now have access to. So what you're talking about is basically that code can be applied real time in in this in, in a Windows machine. I know for a fact ours is a Windows machine. We're using a Digico SD9 and sure. it, it's Windows. It boots up to Windows and it's got an auxiliary monitor over here. And you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's a Windows system. So basically it's just a bunch of audio plugins and stuff, right? That are, that are basically running real time. Essentially, yes. I mean, and one difference I will tell people who are, are new to digital consoles and are maybe just exploring those, you can go from one console that has a small screen and that shows you everything you need to a console that has a screen on the actual mixer plus an additional screen. You, know, you can have an ex extra mouse over here and a keyboard. It can be as advanced and complicated. I don't say complicated, just complex as you want it to be or as simple as you want it to be, that's what's out there and available now in the range of digital consoles. Uh, 10 years ago, it wasn't the case. But right now, you know, what you can get for $2,000 all the way up to, let's say, $60,000. Uh, and honestly, it sounds like a huge range, but there's so much you can get at $2,000 that it, it's hard to say no to some of that stuff. But yeah. that, that's my thoughts on it. I mean, I'll, I'll flip it to Brian for what his thoughts are. I'd say ditto. No. Um, <laughs> All right. Next question. Yeah. So, so here's the thing though. Um, what a lot of churches try to think about, and you touched on it a little bit, Davis, you know, I, we want a digital board so that we can set it and forget it. And then all we have to do is adjust one knob. And I don't know where that misconception came in from, but I know I hear it a lot in churches. I was like, no, you, you can't. Um, you know, I, the, the the biggest fallacy I think in churches is that anybody can run sound, right? It's like if most of the churches that I deal with are smaller churches, you know, under a hundred. So the guy that's running sound is usually some guy that either got volunteered for or knew a computer and got thrown back there. So all they're dealing with is this small Mackie mixer. There's no compressors, no crossovers, no nothing. And that's all they have and that's feeding their mains. So now they get the bright idea of going to a digital board because then they think the digital board would be a lot easier to use because they just set it and they just press a button. And that's not true. There's, there's still work that needs to be done. That's like where you, a lot of these churches that have electronic drums get their electronic drums and they go, oh yeah, we have like 500 different drum sounds that they use. They might use one or two. <laughs> right. And the rest are there. You know, and it's the same thing. The capacity of a digital board can future proof a church, but it's not meant to be 
it's not meant to necessarily simplify the mixing process. All right. That was a little portion of our interview with the guys at Behind the Mixer. <clears throat> now I am going to close out the show. <coughs> Excuse me. Mercy. All right. Before I close out the show, uh, Justin has uh, gone on back to work, and I am checking with the chat room here to see if there's any questions. Um, not much happening on YouTube. No one's asking any questions over there yet. Uh, I, uh, I asked a question in the chat, uh, who's using analog, who's using digital, uh, for their, uh, soundboards. Tommy says that his church is using analog. Um, and he says, I would like to see my church go digital simply because it would help me with streaming. Am I wrong? Um, okay. You can stream with analog or digital. That's, that is irrelevant. That. That would be like saying, um, uh, I would like to have an HD camera because it can help me with streaming. Not really. Um, you can stream standard def. You can stream with a webcam. You can stream with H def, high def. You could have a 4K camera and you can stream that. You can stream from your desktop. You can stream uh, just your desktop wallpaper. You know, I mean, you can stream anything. Okay. So it really doesn't matter what it is. When it comes to, um, the, you know, a, a digital board helping you with your stream. One of the things that a digital board do, does, um, and in this clip uh, we saw that, you know, or, or we we talked about that. One of the things that a digital board um, is is basically a computer with um, controls on it, okay, sliders and stuff like that, okay. So if you think of it as a computer. Like I said, the one at our church is a uh, Digico SD9. It's a Windows computer. It boots up Windows. Um, I can, you know, on the screen we've got we've got a screen about this this big, where we've got um, rep, you know all of the sliders and stuff like that. And you know, you grab a, a pencil uh, with an eraser, you know, and you can click on one of the things and go to another screen and adjust all these sort of deals. What that gives you, what what in in the case of our digital board, what it gives us is a clean way to control every single individual channel or groups of channels um, without having a rack full of supplementary equipment. Okay, let let's let's break this down. <clears throat> when I am editing audio, if I have a perfect example today. Um, I am going to uh, go and set up for uh, a shoot that I'm doing tomorrow morning, two episodes of a new show, two half-hour episodes. Um, it's an interview show. So in one episode, there will be a host and three guests, and then in the other one, there will be the host and four guests, okay? So when I'm editing these things together, I've got four individual people that I am recording, and I'm recording each one of them individually. So when I go in to do my edit... If one of them is talking kind of quietly and she doesn't really project or do anything like this, then I can edit her audio channel by itself and increase her volume level. If she talks kind of like this and kind of, you know, like through her nose or something like that, then I can add a little more bottom end to it so that there's a little more richness into her voice instead of it being sounding all tinny and stuff like that, okay? Um, if one of them is talking just a little bit too loud and all that, you know, I can bring that down a little bit. Um, if one of them doesn't use any vocal inflections or anything, I can like play with the EQ for her to kind of sharpen it up and try to add a little bit more variety or, or, you know, some sort of a pleasant sound to her really monotone voice that she doesn't use any vocal inflections when she talks, you know, at least I can make it technically sound better. Now that's editing when you're doing, um, when you're doing live vocal OK, you've got, say, three or four people that are singing. One person it may be singing too loud and really in that mic, you know, and not modulating on their own. Um, so you need to make adjustments for that person. You've got one person that is sings way too far from the mic or doesn't doesn't pick up the mic and, and hold it by hand, but keeps it on the stand and steps back and then doesn't ever come back up forward to it. You know, so you need to make adjustments them when you have a analog board. If you need to get granular with things like that, then you'll need a piece of equipment for each one of those channels, okay? Now, you can also have a piece of equipment, say like a compressor limiter. You can have that for 
um, a group of channels. So you can say, you know, praise team and take those five microphones and then run them into the uh, compressor and then basically take care of limiting it so that if someone's getting really loud, it will pull it down. And if someone's not quite as much and basically all of their sound will all kind of come, you know, instead of being like this, it'll all kind of come together into one, you know, one basic audio stream that, that sounds okay. Now, if you need to get granular, you would need, you know, a, say a four channel uh, compressor so that you can run an insert into channel one for Becky and run one in for Cat and run one in for Jerry and one in for, you see what I'm saying? Now, if you have a whole lot of stuff going on, then you may need a piece of equipment for every single one. When you have a digital board, you have that stuff generally built into it. Okay, so I can turn on a compressor for channel one, and then I can turn it on for channel two. I can turn on a limiter for channel three because that guy just peaks like crazy. Um, channel four um, really has uh, is one of these people that voice does not have any high end to it. You know, they're one of these folks that and when they talk, they're always just talking like this. You know, and it's very uh, their voice doesn't have any really high end uh, to it whatsoever. And so I can EQ that guy by himself. Now, you know, on analog boards, you have the little EQ strip up there at the top where you've got two channel, three channel, four channel, depending on the board and stuff. And you can always pull down the lower end and pick up the... Okay. But imagine being able to do that and a whole bunch of other stuff per channel. That's what a digital board gives you. It also gives you um, the ability to have a bunch of different um, uh, subgroups that are going out. Okay. Uh, depending on the board, depending on the way it's set up, um, some of these subgroups, um, you know, it's, it's like it's basically like virtual almost. So when you when you are dealing with digital, you, it's very easy to like use IP. Okay, use things like um, uh, we have a we have a, a PreSonus board um, that is set aside for our um, for our. Hang on, my brain is going off. Uh, for, for our uh, recording, for the live stream and all that, right? The way that's connected is a, a breakout box for, uh, for our SD9, okay? But the connector, instead of running a snake, you know, with a whole bunch of different things, and we've only got four outputs, so now I've got, you know, all these, you know, we're really limited because it's an analog board with only four subgroups. What we have is a network cable, and that network cable goes out, and runs into the next room and then goes into this patch board basically and brings in all the stuff that's coming out of there and then from the patch board i go into channel one and go into channel two and go into channel three and go into channel four and then on the main board out there we can say okay let's take um let's take the praise team the the four people that are on the praise team let's put them into one group ah let's put them into two groups girls boys Okay, and so that's going to be channels two and three. Let's take uh, the handheld mic, uh, which you know we make announcements with, um, and the pastor's mic, and we'll put those into subgroup one, and that will come into channel one. So the pastor and the handheld are going to be on the same for the for the recordings. Okay, so now because you know very seldom are two people talking at the same time, where the pastor is using his mic and someone else is up there talking with uh, with using the handheld, even if they are. Um, I still have control uh, over that, and the guy on the board is mixing for the room, and then I'm getting the signal for both of those. So, you know, it, it's still relatively clean, um, and it's not that big a deal. Now, we've got guitars, so maybe the uh, acoustic, uh, two acoustic guitars need to go into one channel, and then the electric guitar by himself, because he gets out of control sometimes, that one needs to go in there. The bass needs to be in by himself, and then the drums need to be in. Now, are you micing your drums? Maybe we want to mic the, um, uh, take take all of the, the drum pieces and have them into, you know, say three separate things where we've got a snare mic, we've got the mic for the bass drum, <coughs> and then we've got a mic on the toms and cymbals. Well, you can break those out into three separates and send those in, so now I can mix those as well. So he's mixing for in the room, and doesn't matter what he's doing for the room, I've got the signal coming in here so I can kind of pick up the, the, uh, the, the, the drums as a whole, or I can pick up just the one. 
it gives you a lot of flexibility because it's a lot easier to break stuff out in for another use. So in that aspect, yes, it does um, help with your streaming. It helps with your streaming. It helps with your recording. It helps with the non-public address uh, of your thing. It helps make that easier. You can do all that with analog too, but you're going to be running a lot of cables. You're going to be running, say, a 20-channel snake into the next room where your recording is. Or you're going to, because your board only has, say, four outputs, then you're going to have a subgroup. for you. Know, you're also sending monitor mixes, right? So some of those are already being used. Now, then you'll have one for voice, you know, microphones, um, and then you've got one for music. You know, so you get a lot more flexibility, a lot more flexibility. And like, like you said, it's amazing what you can get for a couple of grand. In fact, one of the most installed um, boards right now is that Behringer X32 or whatever. I think X32, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and it's only like 2,500 or 3,500 or something like that. You know, our board was 20 grand. This board is not, <laughs> and you can do a lot. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. <clears throat> Phyllis is digital. Jordan is analog. He has that wonderful tube sound to him. <laughs> All right. Adam, did I miss something on the X32? I mean, not on the X32, but uh, in, in my explanation, um, I was... That that that's a that's a an accurate overview, right? Wouldn't you say? Let's see if he answers. <laughs> see? <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the show, guys, because I've got to go for I've got to make about an hour and a half drive um, to set up equipment. I've still got to box everything up and get it all loaded and all that stuff. So uh, let me go ahead and close out the show. <clears throat> wow, tons of great information from these guys. Absolutely amazing. I love um, I, I, I love I love that we're able to reach out to people that are focused and, and narrow in in one field, you know, uh, versus other fields and stuff. I, I just I love that. Guys, go check out behind the mixer. These guys they they're they're chock full of good good information. So please be sure to go check them out. Um, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm like I don't I don't like to thank you guys for watching. How do I do this? Um, By the way, if you want to go more in depth on all the kinds of things that we talk about here on Church Media Guys Show, um, if you uh, our pro tips, things like that, if you want to go more in depth on all that, then please take a look at churchtrainingacademy.com slash join. We would love for you to become a CTA insider. When you join Church Training Academy, you're going to get um, the training courses that we're creating. You're going to get access to our library of tutorials. You're going to get access to our guides. You're going to get access to our private Facebook group, CTA Insiders. It's a private group. Only only the people that are members of Church Training Academy are in there. And that is a very tight-knit community where we're all kind of like focusing on each other and helping each other as best we can. Justin and I like to interact in there. I'm actually trying to get myself to the point where when someone asks a question in there, I just, that was weird. I did a big <gasps> kind of thing. When someone asks a question in there, I want to get to the point where I can uh, just leave a video message for them so that they're getting the answer to their question directly from me. We also do masterminds. So every other week we get together with CTA insiders and we do masterminds where we uh, basically everybody gets a chance to be on the hot seat and bring their problem or their question or the roadblock that they're hitting and stuff. And then Justin and I and the other members in the group start attacking it and try to help them get that problem solved. And that by far is like the best possible feature, I guess, of being with Church Training Academy. Everybody that joins Masterminds walks away saying, this is the best feature out of the entire membership, and we've got a lot of features. So if you're interested in learning how to take uh, your ministry to the next level, how to maximize the tools, how to find the right tools to use to maximize your ministry, go to churchtrainingacademy.com slash join and become a CTA insider to Day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take all the stuff that you've been learning on this and with our pro tips and anything else that's going on with Church Training Academy and use it to go change lives. Boo and yah. Good show. Thanks. You're welcome. Let's see. The X32 is about $2,000 now. Yep. 
Just, uh, Jordan says masterminds are awesome. Tommy says masterminds are awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. All right, guys. I've got to get the car loaded up and get some stuff over to uh, the set that we're using. So you guys take care. Have a fantastic day. Uh, have a fantastic weekend. Uh, Justin and I will be in and out of the insiders group for you insiders. And we will be in and out of, excuse me, the mastermind group. A mastermind group, uh, church media hacks group. Um, so we will see you guys in there.